If you're ever on a British motorway, you'll pass an Eddie Stobart trucker every four minutes. Behind each wheel is a character with a story to tell. I love driving these lorries. From the first day, I remember sitting in one and just knew that I wanted to drive them, basically. Trucking is their life. Diesel gypsy, that's what we call me. Now I came and all my doors now. It's a job that pushes them to the limit. I've got a patience of a nut. So I mean ignorant. And the adrenaline rush is like a drug. We're finally on the move. <laughs> This week, a crack driver has a big problem. This is tight, Jesus. A trucker takes on a live cargo. Don't want to break a horse's leg. Well, people think it's come out like he's had 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. And a missed turning risks a crucial deadline. Oh, God. I want to go one way, and we sat next to me to go the other. So, yeah, this could be fun and games. Eddie Stobart is one of the most recognisable brands in the haulage industry. Their famous red and green livery isn't just plastered on their trucks, they sponsor everything, from a world rally team to a polo team. But it's good for the business. You can fetch a lot of customers along and then you get to know them on a personal level. It works well. Stobart named their wagons after girls, and Ivy, their truck that transports the horses, is one of a kind. And so is its driver, Mick Leach. Coffee in a tub, first thing in the morning, it's the future. 37-year-old Mick is one of William Stobart's most trusted drivers, and in the 15 years he's been working for the company, he's delivered some unusual cargo. World rally cars to British super bikes to pop concerts. And it, every time you think, oh, you can't, you know what I mean, they can't go better than, you know, you can't top this. You know what I mean? I never thought I'd be doing this. And then you get a phone call, do you fancy doing the polo? And <laughs> you just, sorry, <laughs> polo. Wigan born Mick loves his truck, but the same can't be said of his cargo. With horses, uh, they don't really do anything for me. I don't see. The attraction, it's not, it's not my cup of tea. Mick is based at Chelford near Manchester. It's where the company keep all their specialist trailers. So the depot attracts attention from the Eddie Stobart fan club, of which there are 15,000 members. He's Robert. And I'm Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> we are fans of the Eddie Stobart fan club. Debbie and Robert share a love of Stobart, and they've been a couple for 20 years. They're so dedicated, they've bought a camper van to travel round the UK to visit the various depots. I'll go here, isn't it? It even has a shrine to all things Eddie. Robert's hat, the calendar, Stobart umbrella. And of course, not forgetting... The famous towel. The Eddie towel. Mick is getting the horse box ready to leave the depot to collect the polo horses. So Debbie and Robert are in for a treat. We've not seen that horse carrier before. That, the horse carrier we've, we've not seen. Hey, it'd be nice to know where the plane pulled. Polo hat, yeah. I wonder where it is. Might be with P Prince Charles. No, he doesn't play polo. It's, isn't it Edward or Andrew? Charles likes a game of polo. Off we go. Debbie and Robert are about to get close up and personal with the horse box. Oh, we got some spotters arrived. It's flashed his lights in the outside. You alright? Debbie can't resist jumping out to get a snap. I'd like to take a few photos, mate. No problem. No problem. I'll see you soon, eh? Take care. See you later. That is one neat truck. 
I wish I could have got a look inside it. <laughs> there are three vehicles in the Stobart horse carrier fleet. Between them, they can carry 42 horses. And Mick drives the best one of the lot. Ivy is a total one-off. She's a custom-built rigid horse box, a stable on wheels worth £120,000. In the rear, she can carry up to 10 horses in a climate-controlled environment. At the front, Mick's got a fully stocked galley kitchen, shower room and toilet. And to the side, there's a pull-out canopy. Mix travelling 30 miles to the Stobart Polo Team Stables in Nutsford, Cheshire. Hey, you big boy. Good, mate. Good you? Yeah, yeah, good, good. The Polo Team boss, Nico San Roman, is there to supervise the precious horses going on board. He's the main man, he's Nico. Yeah, yeah. He looks after the result, um, looks after the grooms, the horses, the team. He's like the dad. <laughs> the godfather. <laughs> Argentinian Nico is a professional polo player who knows his horses are going to be in good hands. It's like travelling in first class, you know? So it's good. It's very good. The thoroughbreds also come from Argentina and they're worth around £20,000 each. But Mick's not all that impressed. They're bred to do a job and that's what they do. I drive the truck and they do that. <laughs> the weather's roasting hot. And Mick's got to make sure the horses don't arrive for the match too hot and bothered. We're going to put the fans on. Yeah. So we'll just bring down a steady cool breeze, keep the temperature down inside the horse box, and obviously keep the horses nice and happy. Mick and the horses are travelling 180 miles from Nutsford to Ascot in Berkshire. It'll take him four hours at a steady pace. He can't rush this job. He can keep an eye on his cargo via CCTV. You've got to look out for potholes, anything that's going to throw the truck in a, a different direction where it's going to make the horses, you know, spooked. You don't want to break a horse's leg or anything like that. Well, people think it's come out like he's had 10 rounds with Mike Tyson. Coming up, Mick encounters a problem. Right, so we've no power at the moment. We've got a flat back chilling. And the biggest truck and trailer in the fleet takes a battery. It's actually on a little bit off the wheels there. Eddie Stobart trucks transport some unusual cargo. They're even equipped to carry horses for their more wealthy clients. The bosses are passionate about horses themselves. In fact, they sponsor a polo team. And today, Mick Leach has got 200,000 quid's worth of polar horses in the back of his truck, Ivy, and is delivering them to a match in Ascot. But off the beaten track, his sat-nav's not working. Just looking for a polo field. A bit of grass and four sticks sticking up in the air with the flags on. Now we're looking for some wooden gates, apparently. Trucker intuition kicks in. Ah, polo ground. Lovely ground. It's good to have the weather to go with it. Once he arrives at the ground, Mick's got to set up a hospitality area for the players. But after blasting cold air on the horses for the last four hours, he's got a problem. He can't set up the electrical awning. I think the battery's flat, but I don't think they've got jump leads on board. What? Right, so we've no power at the moment. We've got a flat battery, I think. You're a gentleman. Thank you. Touch fingers with no explosions, we might just uh, get the old uh, generator going. We've got illumination, fingers crossed there, eh? and hopefully, please, please, please start, because without it, we can't get the air on and out. And there she fires. <sighs> I'm still in a job tomorrow. But his job doesn't end there. He's got to cater for the polo team and the six Argentinian stable hands who look after the horses. Mick used to be a chef, but the food he's preparing today isn't exactly fine dining. It's your basic care. Uh, I know it seems daft, but to a point, kids' party food. Oh, your sausage rolls. You know, your ham, your cheese sandwiches, jammy dodgers. It's the future. 
The polo matches serve as a good way for Stobart's bosses to entertain business clients. They get more fancy catering laid on. We've had a lovely meal in, in the clubhouse and it, it works well. But despite the thoroughbreds on display, it turns out mixed truck Ivy is the real star of the show. William's invited guests get to have a peek around this unique specimen. Oh, yeah. Don't mind just having a quick look, do you? Drop a bit of wood. Yeah. Like yeah. your control panel. Yeah. Um, word, look at all that. Long <laughs> <hole. laughs> and obviously we've got the kitchen area. We've got like a toilet and shower in there, so... I'd love one. <laughs> yes, I would. <laughs> I can't ride a horse, though. Scores 5-3 at the moment to us. Do you fancy it yourself? No, you're all right. I'll stick to driving trucks, thank you. After a tight match, the Stobart team come home with some silverware. I did it well there, like. Another trophy coming back our way. Another one to the collection. <laughs> Mick drives the horses back to their stables. After a long day, there's only one more job to do. Now we're just going to wash all the, the hot out the back. It's all glitz and glam. We'll just drive a truck to the polo and watch polo, eh? Ready for home now. Uh, it'd be great to see the wife. Obviously, I miss her when I'm away. So it's great to get home. Cup of tea, telly, and listen to her nag to me. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally, Stobarts get asked to carry some things that are out of the ordinary. And today, trucker Matt Eakins is about to take on a once-in-a-lifetime job. It's uh, something totally, totally different that I'm used to. I've never done it before. And, uh, yeah, it's all exciting. I know roughly where I'm going to go and how to get there, you know, but once we're there, I don't know what to expect. So, um, yeah, stand by your beds and we'll find out. Matt's been an Eddie Stobart driver for eight years, and today he's picking up the most precious cargo of his driving career. Four-month-old Riley Kellen. Her dad, Will Shears, is the editor of Trucker magazine, Truck and Driver. Will is mad about trucks. He's come up with the idea of having a truck named after his daughter, and he wants to take it one step further. It's Riley's christening, and uh, since she's had the, the truck named after her, I thought it might be a nice idea for her to travel to the church in the truck. It's a real honour, isn't it, Riley? Hopefully uh, she'll appreciate it as well, though. <laughs> as soon as we had the truck named after her, we got these, uh, these pictures taken. She hasn't actually seen the truck herself yet, only, uh, only the photos. But, um, yeah, here it is, uh, Riley Kellen. We haven't actually told um, everyone what's happening. We've just said to be at the church for three, uh, so uh, there'll be a few surprised faces when we turn up. But it's touch and go whether Matt will make it to the church on time. Absolutely no idea where we're going. I'm a little bit stressed out because I've got to be at uh, a specific location, the latest, half past two. I want to go one way and we're sat next to me to go the other. But yeah, this could be fun and games. We've still got time. We've got to be in the church in about 20 minutes. I think I'm just going to pass me turning. It's typical of me, I took the wrong turning. Yeah, hopefully it'll be here soon. <laughs> oh, God. We're barely sat there, ain't picking it up. Thankfully, Matt's map reading skills pay off. Uh, absolutely superb, that looks fantastic. Really nice. Will, Matt, nice to meet you. Thank How you so you? much for doing this, really yeah, no appreciate problem. it. Uh, I don't suppose you have too many deliveries to churches, do you? No, definitely, yeah, this is the first, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. Different, isn't it? But no, it's all good. Matt's got five minutes to load up, which would be easy if it weren't for one of those tricky baby seats. Let's see if this fits. Right, now this isn't particularly easy putting in my car. It goes through there. One bit goes under there. I think she's gonna be a fan like Daddy, that's for sure. But, um, oh, she's got a few toy trucks as well, so, yep. Yeah. Starts with me to go on. Oh, no, that goes under. Sorry, that bit goes under the back. Oh, right, okay. This is, uh a bit different, isn't it? Easy, yeah. I think that's about it, isn't it? Yep, that's not going anywhere. 
Let me go and get the seat. And the baby? Hey, it's, it's rear facing, so she, oh, is she it? won't get to see where she's going. That's it. Here we go. She looks all right. <laughs> the way to the church. We carry so many loads in the back, you know, with, with bottles, boxes, everything else. So I don't think I've ever been more scared driving a truck with a, a little involved, you know. The family had no idea that Riley would be arriving in such style. But, yeah, I think that was all right, all right didn't they? Fine, yeah. brilliant, that was. <laughs> but Will's mum isn't surprised at her son's bright idea. He loves them when he's writing about them all day, isn't he? So, uh, anything on four wheels. OK. Not too bad at all, is it? Nice and smooth, thank you very much. Yeah, not too bad at all. Yeah, crack on with uh, the normal work, the boring side of work. Matt is also available for weddings, bar mitzvahs and children's parties. The Stobart base in Cumbria is where it all started in the 70s with eight lorries. Now they've got 40 depots all over the UK, housing almost 2,000 trucks. But Carlisle is still home to the biggest trucks on Britain's roads. The drawbar wagon and drag. And it's down to drivers like 26-year-old David Graham to control these beasts. If you're driving the biggest thing on the road, you've, you've got to be the king of the road. King of the road, David Graham, has been driving these double wagons for the last four years. You get a lot of impatient car drivers stuck behind you, and sometimes as they come past you, they like to give you a nice little hand gesture, which happens quite often. But you just learn to ignore it. Try hard just not to give a hand gesture back. The double trailer is designed to carry high volume light loads. And at the Carlisle Depot warehouse, they store 140 million empty tins at any one time. So this truck is ideal for the job. In fact, the majority of drinks cans in Britain have been transported by one of these Stobart lorries. On every pallet, there is. There's 6,318 on every pallet and there's 24 pallets. Thanks, David. That means he's carrying around 152,000 empty cans. But transporting them in these double trailers is no easy ride. This type of wagon drives differently. It, it turns differently and reverses differently. It takes a bit of a... we're getting used to, really. Today, David's taking a load to be filled up at a brewery. From the Carlisle Depot, he's travelling 130 miles south to Sherburn near Leeds, which means crossing the Pennine Hills. The road we're using today, quite often in high winds, they actually close it to uh, HGVs and high-sided vehicles, because on the, over the, on the top of the peak it can get too windy. With the cans being so light and the giant curtain sides of the trailer so large, it's important to know how to control the wagon, particularly when it's windy, like today. Yeah, say they're obviously we're having a light load and we've been a curtain cider. You know, there's, there's no way to hold the trailer down or to hold the wagon down because it weighs next, it only weighs a couple of ton. Once the wind hits us, it's, you know, it, it can bow the curtain and it almost works as a sail, really. It can push it all over the place. You basically just going to surf and down the motorway. David's truck is called Stephanie June. She's a six-cylinder turbo diesel and manufactured by Scania. Together with her double whammy trailer, she costs around £150,000. They're the most expensive in Stobart's fleet, but they're designed to do as much as a million miles in their lifetime. It's actually blown a little bit off the wheels there. You feel the wagon move that way, so you find you have to constantly turn against it. Just pushing, you just kind of trying to push the other, so say the axle on that side, it's, it's kind of taking less pressure off it, so it makes the wheel start to spin. So then you've just got to kind of control, you don't need to a wheel spinning. If you just ignore it, you'd end up in the ditch. 
coming up. A heavy load drags the drawbar down. Start off with trying to get as fast as you can and try and keep you, your foot on the throttle as much as you can. A chilled driver has a close shave. This is a joke. And we get to hear Debbie and Robert's special request. We asked if we could have our van cab wrapped like an Eddie wagon. Will their wish be granted? Find out after the break. Trucker David Graham has been battling the wind and the rain to deliver five tonnes of empty cans. But luckily for him, the weather's improved and now he's swapping his empties for 28 tonnes of bottled coke. Sobbets alone deliver 7 million cans of coke a week. Especially around Christmas time, it's just... I think that the, the supermarkets receive a load of coke maybe every hour. So there's a lot, there's a lot gets consumed, but it's, uh, it's a good thing really because it keeps us in the job. He's got to be careful how he loads up the trailer. He needs to get the distribution just right, or the trailer could become unstable and tip up. It's just like a lot, like every axle's got a set weight, and if you were to put four of them pallets on the front, there'd be too much weight, and then the front axle would actually become dangerous. If you load one side heavier, and you were to take road around the corner and it was to go, then you, you can actually send the wagon over the top. Now the truck's fully loaded, it's a different beast to handle than when it's full of empty cans. With this weight on, you slow right down to just under 30 mile an hour. And on the Pennine Hills, David needs to completely alter his driving technique. Start off with trying to get as fast as you can, you know, try and keep, keep as much momentum and try and keep your, your foot on the throttle as much as you can and, and only try and change gear if you have to. Unlike most of the Stobart fleet, the Scania has manual gears, 16 of them. There's never gear positions for gears. So if I flick that switch up, that's one gear. And then I put the switch back down, and that's another gear. You know, it takes a, a while to get used to it. You've got to get to trickle, try and change gears as smooth as possible so you don't drag the, drag the, the wagon even further, slower. Otherwise, if you were to stop on the hill, it, it'd take you forever to get started again. After some nifty gear changing, David drops his consignment of coke back to the depot in Carlisle. That's it, that's finished now. Home time. Also pitched up today are Eddie fans Debbie and Robert. They live locally, so they've come to the Carlisle depot to get their trucking fix. Friday's is the best day to be here, usually, because everybody's coming home. It's nice to come and watch them, you know, and see the different sort of wagons coming in. If we're at home, we'll always hear one o'clock till five-ish on a Friday. This will always be our favourite depot. Because it's our home. Because this is head office, this is where it all started, started for us. Yeah. And there's something about Debbie's past that may surprise you. I do have a driving history, driving large vehicles as a coach driver. And I sometimes think I should have been a truck driver. I didn't always have the patience yeah. that I should have had with passengers. With 200 lorries coming and going each day, Robert and Debbie soon get on first name terms with the trucks. Only special names like Gigi and Twiggy. I used to have a name. It wasn't named after me, but it's just coincidental that a truck was named Debbie. That truck has been scrapped a lot of years ago. Maybe I'll get another one. You never know, Debbie. With seven brand new trucks getting wrapped in the Stobart livery every day, there could soon be two of you in the depot again. We approached Stobart and, don't laugh right, we asked if we could have our van cab wrapped like an Eddie wagon. And they sent us a very nice letter to say, well, it wouldn't be possible. So we said, okay, fair enough. At least we do have our little bit on the front here, which says we are fans of Eddie Stobart. Which means a lot to us. Yeah. So everything in this van is to do with Stobart. Stobart. We were going to get a Stobart uh, duvet. But it was, well, they were only available. They were only available in singles. No, no, no doubles. So if they'd been a little cheaper, are you listening, William? I would have bought two and made a double out of them. <laughs> Thank you.
The Stobart Chill Depot near Alcester in Warwickshire delivers fresh produce from local farms to the major supermarkets, and they've never been so busy. After one of the hottest summers in 10 years, the strawberry farmers have had a bumper crop, 7,000 tonnes worth. We would dispatch uh, daily over 100,000 pounds worth of, uh, of produce, and that must get there on time. For the Stobart drivers that have to collect the strawberries, that means getting your 40-tonne Arctic down roads meant for a horse and cart. Oh, this is tight now here, yeah, crikey. One of those drivers is 51-year-old Jamie Hawkins. I work on a job with tight lanes, country lanes, getting stuck in a place you're not sure of, uh, bridges, and having to back out of places that's really tight. It's 8 a.m. and Jamie's picking up his orders for the day. Same out cut burns. COVID, uh, cut burns, that's the bad one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Here, here, we, here we go. He's got to collect from two farms that are out in the sticks. It sounds a bit airy, to be honest. I've never been there before. So Jamie goes in search of some advice from his fellow drivers who've done the route before. Anybody know where that is? Coburn's. I've heard it's a right sound safe to get to. Have you been there? Yeah. Go on then. Hey, hey, it's a map on there. Oh, yeah, go on. How bad is he? Just a narrow road. Right, oh, OK. Here. OK. Hey, oh, never. No. Are you oh. right? Jamie's route's pretty tight, to be honest. It's Literally windy country lanes. If you meet a car the other way, then the car has to reverse, basically, because you're not going to reverse the lorry back. Come down to the T-junction. Watch okay. yourself on the T-junction. That is tight coming out the front. The bridge he has to go across. Um, there's literally a couple of inches either side. He'll have the wall down and everything by the time he's back. <laughs> the yeah. right-hand fork, you'll keep going right. No way. I no. can't get down there. You go left. There's a left-hand little fork. Just keep Last... going. That's it. No. See you tomorrow. You'll probably have a night out. You that. probably. <laughs> get stuck here lifting out, probably. From the Alcester depot, he's heading to a farm near Coventry to pick up his first load of strawberries. And as we've already heard, it's going to be a tricky journey. You've got to be switched on from the minute you start this engine to the minute you shut it off. You've got to have eyes up your backside, to be honest. I've eaten nothing yet, not in 10 years. So, very, I'm very lucky, I'm a good driver, I don't, I don't know which one it is. Jamie hasn't always been a trucker. He used to be a rock star. I can feel you closer, like Rewind to 1980 when Jamie had golden locks and was the drummer in rock band Street Legal. They were on the brink of fame and fortune and were signed to Whitesnake's management company. We were going to go on World Tour with Whitesnake, that was what we were promised. But then, as with many dreams of rock stardom, the tour never happened, and their label dropped them. By which time, we missed the boat, basically. So, we, didn't, we just lost the will to live, to be honest. Miss it, I wish I was still playing. <laughs> Dream on, Jamie, because there are strawberries to be collected. His first problem is there's been a diversion. The road that I should have gone down to King's Cape is actually closed. Oh, here we go. A good start. Oh, you're having a laugh. Didn't realise it was as, as tight as this. This is quite tight. This is tiny. That's tight. Jeez, look at that. The trailer's in the edge there. And the trailer on that side as well. Mirrors in both sides. You're having a laugh. I just said, he's standing there. For a man who's used to the open road, a few inches either side of the truck is a challenge. Oh, I mean, they weren't messing around when they said this was bad at the depot. I thought they were messing around, they weren't. I, I just hope we don't get any thinner. It's a garden path. We're eating the roof and everything. This is a joke. And just when he thought it couldn't get any worse, Oh, here we got a car coming up. Well done. We're gonna have to go back. Now uh, this is quite tight now. This is she's nerve-wracking a little bit. 
He's out of the woods, but his woes aren't over yet. Hang on, I'll just make sure. Excuse me, am I okay for Cob Coburns? Down the bottom of the bank there, take a bare left. Bare left, thanks mate. At the fork in the road, he can't afford to make the wrong choice, or he could end up in a dead end. So he rings the office to make absolutely certain. That's too doggy, that is. Hello? John? Yeah? Jamie? Hello, right. Hello, mate. I'm at the fork in the road. Now, a local told me to go left. Do I stay right? It looks well dodgy going left, but the guy said it's left. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no worries. Thanks, John. Okay. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Till I wait. Yeah. Jamie takes the plunge. I think we're there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. After a stunning performance, the ex rocker gets loaded with 10,000 punnets of strawberries. Thank right. so much. Thanks, mate. See you later. From Coventry, he travels onto Marden in Hereford to pick up his next load of strawberries. It makes you laugh. You get all these people like at, like at Wimbledon when they're eating the strawberries and they have no idea about how we get them to the stores, uh, you know, where they come from. The stores demand the fruit reaches them in the quickest time possible. The strawberries we pick up theoretically will be on the shelves in Tesco's tomorrow. That's how, that's how on the boys. Tesco allows Stobart a half hour window to get the fruit delivered to them. Any holdups could mean jeopardizing the load. But Jamie can't rush the next bit of his journey. To get to the farm, means going over a very narrow bridge. It's really tight, very, very tight. You've got no leeway whatsoever. One, one false move, you'll have the wall off the bridge. And even worse, you could put the trailer in the river, so it's, this is well dodgy now. Not looking forward to this. This is tight, Jesus. Two inches each side, that's all. Oi. That's a joke. Jamie's been trucking for 10 years, but the bridge is one of the most challenging obstacles he's experienced. Right, oh, yeah, off. Was tight. <laughs> Let's go. Rock and roll, Jamie. But the bridge has lost in time. Jamie arrives for his second pickup late. It's a bigger farm, so hopefully they give us a quick turnaround and uh, hopefully we'll be on time. Because again, I'm getting a bit worried now. We're getting a bit behind. So. Uh, Fingers crossed we'll get turned around, get, get on the way. Good if you can. Like all good rock drummers, Jamie has patience issues. Always tapping. My mum used to tell me off loads. I used to set the saucepans and all the pans up and bash them out of them in the kitchen. I used to go mad. The music industry's loss is the haulage industry's gain, because Jamie's a stickler for time. It's like a nervous energy. You're doing it because you're thinking, come on, come on, I've got to get, I've got to get going. So, you, you know, it's just, it's just, you're buzzing, you want to get away. So you tend to start tapping and get kind of agitated. You want to, get on, want to get back on the road. Come on, time's pushing on now. We need to go as quick as we can. Let's go. 
Once Jamie's got a full load of strawberries, he's got a 65 mile journey south to the supermarket depot near Bristol. Okay, we're having a good run now, so fingers crossed we're, we're pulling it back a little bit now. But just when it was all going well. <laughs> just right on the door, we get stuck in traffic now. Possibly gonna make me late. Just get there as quick as you can, as close to the time. And uh, so hopefully they'll be okay about it. He's made it through the jam, but he's run over his half hour leeway for delivery. There's a strong chance his load could be rejected. Well, time's clicking, I've just turned up at the gates now. See what they say at the gate. Hello, Stobarts. What are you carrying, please? Uh, produce, plus threes. A15, then, please. Thank you. Yeah, we made it, just about. Heading back now to uh, our depot at Alcester, and then off to bed, I'm absolutely cream cracking. Before he hits the sack, Jamie has just enough time to indulge in his first love. I am a driver, but if there's any rock bands out there that need a good drummer, give us a shout, because I'll be out of here. Coming up, an international driver battens down the hatches against illegal immigrants. You've got to be on your toes all the time because one lap and that's it. They'll, they'll be in. Eighty international drivers work for Eddie Stobart, making up to 5,000 channel crossings each year. But there's one thing that preys on their mind each time they do that crossing. Something that carries a fine of £2,000 if they're found with one on board. And that's illegal immigrants. One time I had two guys underneath wrapped round the axles. Unbelievable. One was from Iraq, one was from Iran. And I thought, well, they hated each other. 58-year-old Jeff Welford is a veteran international driver and he's notched up nearly 1,500 channel crossings. I call them puddle jumping and you're just going from like the UK to like Cali or to Belgium. Like many drivers, trucking runs in the family. My father was a truck driver. It's all I've ever wanted to do, drive a truck. So I do. Today, Jeff's at the Stobart Depot at Lockeren, Belgium. He's going to be travelling 180 miles to Calais and then on to the UK. Before he leaves, Jeff gives his truck a good once-over to make sure he hasn't got any unwanted guests. Right, I'm just checking the sale. This is a wire sale, so if anybody breaks in, any immigrants get in, I'll know about it because the wire's been broken. And this, this is the only way you can get in this because it's a fridge trail, the only way you can get in is through the back doors. So there's nobody in because the sale's intact. Job done. Jeff's been an international tramper for 30 years, and although he can be away from home for weeks at a time, it does have its advantages. I'd rather be on foreign roads than UK roads. They're not so busy. I mean, in England, the roads are busy all the time, even through the night. Jeff's taking 15 tonnes of coffee over to the UK via the Eurotunnel at Calais. It's his preferred route because 23 years ago, when the only way across was by ferry, he lived through the Zeebrugge disaster. I was on the Earl de Frey Enterprise at Zeebrugge when it went down, which was uh, a bit frightening. He was on the ship when 193 people were killed after it capsized because the crew failed to close the ship's bow door. I suffered from hypothermia. Everybody that was on it, I think, had to go to a psychiatrist. Because of the things you saw on there, you know, the body.
bodies and everything floating about. If Jeff hadn't made his way up to the restaurant level as soon as he boarded, he could easily have been one of the many who drowned in the decks below. I think I went back out three weeks after. I went across the Calais and come back. And that was frightening. But now, I mean, since then, I've been on ferries one, two days. But it's always there in the back of your mind. As Jeff approaches Calais, his focus is once again on the problem in hand. How to avoid an illegal immigrant hopping on board. You do not stop in Cali. If you're coming home, you don't park up. If I, if I can't make it under the train and into England, I will park up long before Cali. I won't park there. No. The closer you get to the port, the more risk there is of even the shortest break giving illegal immigrants the opportunity to enter a trailer. A few years ago, Jeff learned his lesson the hard way. Stopped at Cali, three o'clock in the morning, and bought some beer, and put it in the back of the trailer. Got off the ferry at Dover, I looked in the mirror and I saw the bulge in the curtain. So I went into the services, and there was a, a slash in the curtain. And as I was looking at it, some fingers come out. This other driver come running over, asked me what the problem was. I said, somebody's in my trailer. And I had 11 immigrants in. 11, the football team, and every one of them had a bottle of beer in hand. My beer. That round of drinks would have cost Jeff a cool £22,000 if the border agency's fines had then been in place. Last year, nearly 50,000 immigrants were caught trying to enter the UK illegally. You've got to be on your toes all the time. You've got to be vigilant all the time because one lapse and that's it, they'll, they'll be in. They will get in. Jeff's now minutes away from Calais and is about to get to the checkpoint. Coming up to the border control, see what they see. With nearly a million trucks passing through Calais a year, their border checks are some of the most stringent in the world. First, the drivers go through the French border control, where the trailer is monitored using passive waves to detect whether anyone is hidden in the vehicle. UK border control use a heart detector and a carbon dioxide probe which reaches into the trailer. It picks up the smallest rise in carbon dioxide, indicating that someone inside is breathing. And if they catch anyone, the trailer undergoes a thorough search. Jeff's about to go through the X-ray machine. If there's anyone on board, there's nowhere to hide. It's always a tense moment, but Jeff's not worried. His truck's temperature's set to an icy four degrees centigrade. I think it's nice when you have a fridge on. They look at a fridge and it's running, they think, oh, they ain't going there. It might freeze me to death. <laughs> As he gets the all clear, Jeff boards the Eurotunnel for Folkestone and home. Next time on Eddie Stobart Trucks and Trailers, a driver takes on the hardest manoeuvre in the trucking handbook. You've gone a bit too tight. Ah! We need to have a couple of goes at it here. A night shift trucker gets a raw deal at the meat market. See what I mean, you to them. This is turning into a nightmare. And who will win in a race to Scotland, train or truck? Where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? There, there it is, that's the f***ing train!